We're here with Justin Waller, eight-figure entrepreneur. Today, we're gonna be breaking down the secrets to becoming the best version of yourself and how to self-improve to become the best version of yourself as a young man in today's world. For those watching right now, they see you, they see that you built a big company, you're going all over the place, but they don't realize that you didn't come from a lot of money, you didn't inherit anything, you didn't just be raised into like a family business. Yeah, so a lot of times somebody will start off in a certain place and they end up looking like a trust fund baby. And I've actually had friends of mine come to me and admit to me, it's like, hey, I thought you came from money. You're always working on the character that you become. The lucky ones start off with nothing. I'm grateful for growing up poor. I'm grateful for the violence that I saw as a child in my house. Because what really will make you happy and proud of yourself at, in life is when you climb up a mountain, you have the opportunity to look down. But if you're born at the top of the mountain, you have a completely different issue, which is finding another mountain fast and one that will make you excited. So the good thing about being born with nothing is that you're not scared of going back. I don't need a safety net. I've already been on the floor. I feel genuinely lucky and grateful. Anybody that is going through any pain or any struggle in their life, write down how grateful you are for it because you can tell the size of a man by the size of his problems. Problems are never gonna go away. It's just gonna be whether you can pay your light bill or you have somebody that owes you a million bucks. If you can take any issue in your life and twist it to be part Part of your hero's journey, your story, the person that makes you who you are, you can't become a real king if you don't have scars on you. Because it'll be hard for but anybody to respect or follow you unless they know you've gone through the pressure of life in some way. What are some of those fundamental things that people can do right now watching this to kind of you know connect with themselves and find that greater purpose? You can go on your phone, find the people that live a life that you want to live, spend substantial time with them, learning from them again and again and again, and then learn from other people, and then learn from other people, and then make a Venn diagram and take all the things that you hear in every podcast and every book and see how many individual bullet points hit in every one of those people's messages. If you really wanted to find like the true core of what's gonna make you go, is if you take all of the information that you take over time and you start listening for the things that you hear every one of them say. The list is not very big. It'll be like be relentless, understand and educate yourself, money, fitness, and then as you start to elevate past those things, then you can get into the, the style and the game and the swag. There is more happiness gained from zero to $1 million than there will ever be from 1 million to 10 million. And I would even argue maybe even from 10 million to 100 because all of the things that are gonna make you happy on a day-to-day -day basis can really be done from zero to a million. Everything else, man, I could do without this suit. I could do without the car in the building. I could do without the trucks at home or, or like the extra couple houses. None of those things are gonna make you happy. There's a common piece of advice that a lot of people give it, which is to follow your passion. How do you balance following your passion versus following what you're really good at and what's gonna yeah. make you a lot of money? What, what is your yeah. take on that? I'll argue that following your passion is bullshit. And the reason I think it's bullshit is for two reasons. Number one, because let's say you wanna be a fitness trainer. You're gonna be trading your time for money. You're not gonna enjoy that. You're gonna realize you're a professional squat spotter, that you don't like your bosses, you don't like the manager, you're tired of the gym. You're gonna find out real quickly that your passion is not what you thought it was. Nobody wants to grow up hanging steel, but you choose a business model that you can succeed in, that you can build a life big enough to go do whatever the fuck you want. I'm not passionate about steel. One of my favorite moments in, in my whole career is I was sitting at a red light in New Orleans. I looked across the way and I saw two of my trucks and they didn't know I was in town. Just seeing my own trucks on the road. Was I passionate about steel? No, but I was passionate about building something. I was passionate about being able to change my entire life. I was passionate about the man that I was gonna become. That's what you should focus on. You should pick a vehicle that you think has a lot of exponential growth fact, like opportunity. Put all of your life's energy into it. Stay in it when it gets hard. Stay in it when you fail. Start to make a substantial amount of money. Develop as a person. At 21, how can you know what your passion is? You haven't lived enough life to even know what is out there. Build something sustainable that will set you free so you can go on that mission to find truth in the world and find out what that thing is that lights you up inside. Then you can follow your passion. Any instances in which you've noticed yourself kind of going through a period mentally where you weren't necessarily yourself or you were struggling with anything that you were kind of going through, what are some things that you did to get out of those ruts or that you've noticed with other people that may be in certain positions where they're not happy or they're fulfilled with themselves? Any advice to someone who may be kind of struggling mentally right now? Maybe they're questioning themselves, their purpose, their worth, whatever it may be. And any advice to someone going through a storm mentally right now? It'll be over soon. Soon enough, I always advise people to change their atmosphere. Go see a different place and you go spend time somewhere else. You can breathe different air. You can be around different people. You're driving to go up, 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 up. Because of business and the way cycles are, you'll get pulled down. So if you can remove yourself from it, go get energy from somewhere else and bring it back into that environment and help propel you again. 
So when I go back into that environment of work, I have a, a new set of skills, a new set of power, leave the atmosphere, recharge somewhere else, and then get ready to go back into your atmosphere and face war, because that's what it is every day. And your final message to people watching this right now, they want to really become the best version of themselves in today's world. If you can leave them with just a couple last piece of advice, one last message to them that they can really take with them, either as an entrepreneur in their career, just life in general. Learn to have a relentless heart. There's nothing in this world that you can't achieve as long as you don't quit. You believe in yourself and you have heart along the way. You're going to have to do things you don't want to do in your career. You're going to have to let people go. You're going to have to love people through problems and issues that they face. If you can relentlessly push through this world with a big heart that will stand up for yourself when it's time and show grace when it's needed, there's nothing you can't accomplish with you and the team that you build around you. And it will take a team. So remember that you must be relentless. You must have heart. You must show up every day and sometimes it takes a little grace and a kick in the ass to get people in the right direction for you. But there's nothing you can't do. A lot of people got hurt in 2008 because they were sitting on a bunch of houses that could not get sold. Even now, when I see people building houses right now, I'm like, who's buying these houses at 7.5% interest rate? So it's like these types of things that we're gonna be very in-depthly teaching people in the real estate course, we're gonna call it allies. Not only are we gonna teach the course, but for the students that join and they run into a deal, we're actually gonna partner with them. We're gonna take that step and help them get the deal through it is completely different than what's been offered thus far. Flipping, wholesaling, building, developing, we're going to be there with them in the trenches. So I'm looking forward not only to seeing people make money, also hope to see them at the closing table.